Hello again, my name is Ben, here I am today with another Halo Mega Constructs review. This time I have the Halo uh, Red Team Warthog Rescue. This is Mega Brand, uh, Halo Universe sub-theme, I suppose. Um, it has ages 8 and up, 324 pieces, 3 minifigures, and retail, it is a Walmart exclusive retailing for $29.97, so there's that. So here it is, here's the box, pretty basic stuff. Um, get some basic Forerunner glyphs in the background. We have the main Warthog in the foreground with all the figures in it. Um, just a gray border around it. You'll see the newer Mega brand with the deeper pur purple instead of the orange. Halo, the three figures on the sides. All the basic information on the bottom. Uh, kind of does it for that. Top of the box, you'll see all the figures laid out. Uh oh, I knocked over one of them. But uh, the bottom. Pretty basic legal information. Uh, let me flip that around to the proper side. My apologies. On this side, you'll see a Halo Infinite Master Chief with just some basic branding, Mega, and there's a picture of the Warthog. On the other side, we turn this right here. You'll see some very nice landscaping with a mountain and blue sky with the Warthog and all the characters here, um, which I think looks really nice. Uh, and I definitely prefer in favor of this kind of bland aesthetic here. Turning around the box, you'll see all the characters being lifted out. Um, Jerome, D Spartan Douglas, and Spartan Alice, and the AI Serena. You'll see you can just twitch it between the Goss Hog or the normal Warthog with the fire detailing. See the three weapons, uh, a shotgun, an assault rifle, and two SMGs. The suspension system. Um, the sets at the bottom they're promoting there are the um, Ghost of Requiem set, which I've done a review on if you're interested. And the Arbiter's Quest, which uh, I unfortunately do not have yet. I have not been able to find it, and I don't really want to order it, so what are you going to do? But that kind of does it for the box. Pretty basic stuff there. And now moving on to the set itself. Um, so we start off with the figures. We'll start off with the leader of Red Team, Spartan Jerome. Let me bring him out here. All the figures come with a black base, which I am attaching, <laughs> apologies, to this stand so I can sort of just flip them around without having my hands kind of fiddle in the way. So let me just lower down my camera a little bit more here. Let me just move all these things at the back so my camera won't automatically focus onto them. And then we can get a nice good look at Spartan Jerome here. Uh, Jerome092 is using the Mark IV Mjolnir design, which I think is probably one of the better looking uh, Mjolnir designs in game and in lore. Um, unfortunately, personally, I don't feel like it translates nearly as well into the blockier um, plastic designs of the toy, but I think they've done a pretty decent job at capturing it here, and, you know, it's just a nice figure. Uh, basically, <laughs> I'm sorry, he's not securely stain standing, apparently, my apologies, but um, he has pretty basic detailing here, um, see just some armoring detail in the metallic green color. Um, he has a black undersuit, see just the shin armor here, um, see that'll go around, pretty basic stuff there, see this, um, just nice looking metallic green, you'll see more, here's the torso, here's the back, you can see that black undersuit, his torso printing, um, with the single right red stripe, doesn't have his number on it, but, um, apparently that's accurate. I'll be honest, I've never played Halo Wars, either of the two games. I'm not a real-time strategy fan, but I think this is a pretty cool design. But nonetheless, the asymmetrical shoulder design, which is another aspect that is pretty interesting about the Mark IV. On the larger shoulder pad, you'll see a very nicely detailed um, Centurion-looking design. Um, I think it's supposed to be like some sort of Centurion or Spartan, I suppose. But see, it's very finely printed there and looks pretty good. This arm, not much to say, sort of smaller shoulder, you'll see basic detailing, no printed design. Black assault rifle using one of the older designs, not the Halo Infinite version. The helmet here, basic Mark IV design with the red stripe on top. Um, pretty good figure, I like him quite a bit. I like the little bit of color on him as far as the design goes. And I think it's a pretty faithful, faithful adaptation of the design. So that does it for Jerome, good figure. Let me just put him back on his stand and move him out of the way. Next, we're moving on to, I believe this is Alice. Uh, I have to look at the box because, again, I'm not familiar with these characters. Now, this is, sorry, apologies, this is Douglas 052, 042. I can tell I'm very well prepared for this video. 
sorry, I just got this and I'm a bit excited. So this is Douglas. He has a lot, he's a lot less going on in comparison to Jerome in terms of printing. It's basically all around the same exact figure, really. This is a nice detailing all around with the metallic green Mark IV design. Um, it's really basic stuff all around. Not really much to go on about. Two dual SMGs in black. Let's see, just a whole wrap around. His main difference is he has a nice um, sort of, I think, some type of bird on his shoulder pad. Not really sure what type of bird it's supposed to be, but it's printed on a sort of shield design. The nice little fine detailing that he has. Very cool figure. Um, not much else to say about him. So moving on to the final member of Red Team. We have Alice. Uh, let me check the numbers. I have to check the box. Alice 130. Um who has the black shotgun. Same basic design. I believe this has the male torso and not the female one when I was assembling them. Which, assembly-wise, the fig the legs came assembled, but everything else hanging up kind of had to be assembled normally. The only main difference on her design is she has the skull and crossbones on this design, which looks pretty nice, well detailed. Black shotgun. Basic red <laughs> whoops. They're very not, they are not securely placed on these stands, my apologies. Let's give a simple turnaround. Very nice figure, very nice detailing with all of the Red Team members, and I enjoy their designs quite a bit. The final figure to go over is Serena, the um, ship AI from Halo Wars, this first one. A very nice design, you see... The legs and the head are, plant, are molded in this uh, translucent blue color, while her torso and arms are in this clear plastic translucent, which I think looks really nice. A lot of detail and just a overall really good looking design. Uh, how accurate it is, I'm not too sure, but from the pictures I've seen from just the wiki page, it looks decently spot on for the size that they're working with, and it's included on this little stand. so. That's a nice little bonus, I suppose. Now, going on to the... Well, I suppose before going on to the Warthog, I'll mention the little barricade and the DOS turret that is a separate build. Um, it's built on these basic little plates, which aren't super stable, and are kind of just randomly constructed. Of course, there's a reason, um, but barricade is pretty nice. The DOS turret is also well, nice, very nicely constructed. A little weird terrain, but of course, that's for the alternate mode for just a standard Warthog with the Goss turret, so it makes sense and honestly with the pieces they were able to implement these with, I think it turned out pretty nice. And separately I think it can make for a decent barricade for the figures, so I think that's pretty nice. Now moving on to the Warthog, the more interesting. Um, this is uh, clearly a design based on the more older Bungie design, not the 343 design, clearly. But it has this uh, fire detailing. I'm not really sure why it has the fire detailing. I'm sure someone who has played Halo Wars would be able to enlighten me. And I would greatly appreciate that. Um, starting off with the wheels. Um, these are a different design than the ones in the Warthog. They use these. Um, or at least the Halo Infinite design. Which is the one I'm mostly going to be comparing it to. It's the only other one I have. They use these studs with this plate on them. To, for the caps. Which I think looks pretty nice. And it's something just different than what I've already seen. Um, the underside, not really much to go on about, just some plates. The suspension is, yeah, not really much to say about it. It's not like really satisfying to use or anything, but it's kind of just there, I suppose. The sides here, you'll see a lot of bricks with printing on them, representing the flame detailing all around, which I think is pretty nice and looks pretty good. Um, me personally, I think I'll just have it as a standard warthog. But you'll see just some basic Warthog detailing. The uh, molded um, sort of like rope. The two tusks. Um, the windscreen. This part here. Sort of the railing. The two seats with using are some using some light gray cushioning. Which you can see the figures in pretty simply. Um, see the steering wheel. No real like printed detail on the inside for like control panels or screens. There is a little handlebar there. But you'll see some more filling details for the railing on the back. Um, some more of the framing. You'll see the uh, turret here is in light gray, using some I think pretty similar construction to the one in the Warthog Rally based on Halo Infinite. Um, you can turn the 
uh, barrel, but it's a pretty stiff connection. See the bent antenna, some more pieces building up the back. This handlebar, or the bumper, which is kind of pretty loosely connected, so if you're not careful, careful it can flip off pretty easily. The tail lights, which look pretty nice. Uh, and then, not really much else to go over with it. Pretty basic, um, but overall, I think it's a nice design. I like some of the black on this one in comparison to the silver on the inf Infinite Warthog. Um, and the printing is a nice addition, and I would assume makes it more accurate to whatever Warthog it's based upon. Um, but really not sure what to say about it. I do enjoy it. I want to do a comparison with the Infinite Warthog, which I'll probably get out tomorrow probably. So hopefully you'll stay tuned to that. But that kind of does it for this build. And in one moment, I will switch it over to the Gosshog. So one second. Now that I have it in the Gosshog configuration, uh, there's not really much else to say about it. it. Basically takes all the pieces from the barricade and the little turret and puts them over to the Warthog, which is now a Gosshog, which is her to also get flipped around. There's not really much else to say about it. I think, personally for me, this is just sort of the bigger, better look for it. Um, you know, it's a lot easier to just, like, get a bunch of these and have an army of, like, interchangeable warthogs and goshogs. Um, personally, the flame detail wasn't really uh, what I preferred. And you can, like, amass an army of these and just have turrets for defenses and barricades for any sort of, like, um, base or fight scene you may wanna, might want to make. But... The Gosshawk construction is pretty nice, and I think it just looks pretty nice. Not really much else to say about that. Um, it kind of really does it for the review. One of the last few things I really need to mention here are for the build, for the construction, you get these two 2x4 metallic bricks, which are used for the construction for temporary pieces, and you just take off them towards the end. And there's all spare pieces. Mega constructs or mega brand builds usually have a lot more spare parts than Lego builds, so I sure hope these aren't actually supposed to be in the build and they're just spare pieces, because I'm not really, really familiar with larger set constructions like this. So, um, my final thoughts, um, as I wrap this up, one last thing I need to mention, or I don't really need to mention it, but in the construct in the instruction manual, towards the end, you'll see set, set pictures for the Elephant, the Falcon Sweep, Arbor's Quest, which, sorry, the Ghost of Requiem, and the uh, Halo Heroes for this year. Um, the Halo Heroes haven't released yet, to my knowledge, um, but I'll be looking out for them, hopefully to get reviews out for them. We'll see. But, um, as that wraps up, um, that really does it for the review. Overall, my thoughts on this set, um, I think it's I think it's pretty good. Um, um, I'll do a more in-depth comparison with the um, Infinite Warthog tomorrow, where I'll probably finalize some of my thoughts. I, got, I just got this today, so... Some of the thoughts are still like spinning them around in my head, so I think initial thoughts, I think this is a really good set. The figures are nice. Um, for Halo Wars fans, I think this is probably a bit bigger deal for them than it is for me. But I think you get a, a pretty decent Warthog build, Warthog build out of this and some nice figures. But that kind of but I think the hindrance for some and for myself included is that you can't really like amass an army of these because all you'll end up with is just an army of red team members, which for me isn't exactly appealing. But that really is it worth the price. Um, I'd say for thirty bucks. I think you get a good quantity of like pieces, a build, and figures, and the quality is definitely there. So that's really all I have to say for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll stay tuned for the next time for the video that I'll be making tomorrow, comparing this one with the Infinite Warthog. And with all that being said, once again, hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day and goodbye.